All right, friends. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's see who's hanging out in Facebook land. I am super duper excited because um, Sandy is on her way to me right now. Sorry, I did not mean to keep hitting that because, you know, my bad. Um, it works, it works, yay! <laughs> a couple of people. Karen, I'm so glad. So, so glad. Um, so these are the new Digi um, Waddling Ducks. And as you can see, the one of the cool things about Digis is that you can um, flip flop them and you can change the size up and down and all of that kind of stuff. I actually kind of like the one where this guy's in the front. So I'm going to use this one. It's the flip flop. It's the backwards one. Thanks, Natalie. So um, I'm going to start, I know you guys want rainbow ducks, and so I'm just going to start um, coloring because I don't have a super long time before I have to go to the airport and get my Sandy Ledoux who. So I am going to just kind of go for it and um, hope that you guys... Um, pop in and catch it. I'm going to hope that I can get through all of it. That's another thing. Um, I know he looks like a super happy little duck. They are super happy little ducks. So when doing things rainbow, um, you have to think in terms, you gotta, you gotta think just a little bit differently. Um, I, when I do things rainbow, I really think about where my shadows belong. And you can't, so like, I can't take this red and continue to shadow on this side because that's not really how it's going to work out. So you have to be kind of careful about where you're going with your shadows and how far you're going with your colors. So you have to go shadow, light, shadow kind of thing. And so I run like back and forth. So I do jump around a lot. Um, the caps come off of both ends of the pen because a Copic marker actually has a core in it, a plastic core. And I actually think I have one right here that's busted. Where did it go? Where did I put it? Here it is. So when your marker breaks, so this is the core that's inside a Copic marker. So it's plastic and it's got cotton in it. And so when you fill this with ink, you can see the indentations in the end. That's where the nib presses down into. This is my take apart marker. So this is so dry now I can't even get it out of here. So when you put your nibs in your markers, oh my goodness. There we go. So when you put your nibs in your markers, this is the only part that shows. This is the part that goes down into the nib, okay? So it sticks in there just like that. And it sucks all of the ink out of here and puts it into your nib so that you can color, okay? So I showed you that to tell you this. If you have both caps on your markers. Watch, I'll never be able to get that in now. If you have both caps on your markers, you have like equalized pressure, right? The pressure's the same all the way throughout. If you take one cap off, I'm gonna stop using that pin. If you take one cap off, then all of the ink is gonna go to the point of least resistance. So it's all gonna come out this end. So it's gonna go <clears throat> onto your paper and you're not gonna have control over how fast your ink comes out. But if you take both caps off of your markers, it equalizes the pressure within the barrel. And so now there's air circulating through the whole thing. 
and it makes it so that you don't get big blobs on your paper because now not all the ink is running to this point, it's running to both ends, it's equalized. So um, it helps you prevent, it's like a super long way around of telling you that it helps prevent getting blobs on your paper. Also, a super geeky, more scientific thing is that your hands are warm and the ink inside the barrel of your marker is not. So when you put your hands on your marker, it warms up the ink inside. And when you make something warm, the molecules go faster. And when those molecules move faster, they need somewhere to go. If they're moving slow like this, they can just hang out where they're at. But if they're moving fast like this, they need somewhere to go. And if they don't have anywhere to go, guess where, they, where it goes? Right out of the nib. So, with that being said, if you have super hot hands and you noticed that you keep getting blobs on your markers or on your paper, on your coloring, you might want to have like an ice pack on your desk or you might want to take breaks in between your coloring and let your marker cool off for a second or let your hands cool off so that you stop getting blobs on your paper. And this, my friends, is what I mean by I color from a very different approach. <laughs> um, so many people are artists and I commend them. My brain does not work in that direction. All the stuff I just told you, that's how my brain works. I have to know why I'm getting blobs on my paper in order to understand. So scientifically speaking, <laughs> even though I'm not like a scientist. Good morning, Karen. Hi, Brenda. Um, it just helps me to wrap my brain around why the markers behave the way they do. And that's why I take a very different approach to coloring than most people. You didn't know, Karen, when you asked the question, you were going to get a whole science lesson, huh? <laughs> I love when people ask that question because it really um, lets you know the engineering and stuff that goes into this type of product. Quack, quack. Hi, Melissa. Okay, so I'm gonna start switching into my oranges. Now, just so you know, this duck is not gonna be completely rainbow. It's gonna be like red, orange, yellow, and then green, blue, purple. Like, I'm not doing both the ducks um, rainbow. I'm doing a rainbow of ducks. How about that? Right? Quack, quack. Hopefully I'm not making any of y'all dizzy with my constant rotating of my paper. I'm sure you guys are used to it by now. Not a whole lot to do with that super dark orange. Coin, coin. It must be pronounced differently in French. Just saying. I don't speak French at all. One little iota. I speak no French whatsoever. I speak Spanish. I know sign language. I speak radio code. I speak zero French. Good morning, Laura. Okay, 
I'm spending some time putting some ink in between this red and the orange so I can really marry those colors together. I also don't want him to look striped. Oh, you did a live in English? Good for you. You guys, I'm super excited. I get to go to the airport and get Sandy. Yay. I'm hoping that I can finish these ducks in time that I can stop by Dutch Brothers and get her her favorite drink. On my way to the airport. It all depends though. Depends on how fast I can get this done. As you notice, I am coloring a little bit faster. Um, Number one, because I want to go to the airport and get Sandy. Um, but number two, this is more my normal speed of coloring. not to get the yellow in his eyes. What sticker? Did I miss something? I like stickers. sticker today yes you're right they'll probably be out of stickers by the time I get there is it a cute sticker what is it of I always forget about the stickers on the first because I'm not super big on Dutch, I don't look. So I like coffee and the Dutch uh, blend of coffee is um, not bitter enough for me. It's very soft and I like coffee that punches you in the face. It's like bam, coffee. So I'm still left with a highlight right here. And he probably looks a tiny bit stripey on camera. Camera does some weird stuff to marker coloring. So we're gonna come back in and add a little bit more. I'm just re-going down. Thank you. Oh, it's a Pac-Man theme? Well, that's awesome. I'm all down for a Pac-Man theme sticker. And I skip the darkest color when I go back through. I'm 
because again, I'm trying to soften the transition between these two colors. And so I don't want that super dark color in there. Oops, I went outside of the line. I forgot to do my little shadow thing here. This is just a fun technique that I've been playing with lately. Um, especially when I'm doing rainbows. Just adds a different little level of dimension. Where was I? Yeah, this little duck looks super duper happy. He's like, I'm the happiest duck ever. Yes, I talk to the things that I color. Thanks, Karen. We have all kinds of Karens here this morning. Okay, I'm gonna go around this outside. Okay, and I will come back and do their beaks and their feet later at the end okay so now i have red orange yellow so now we're going to go with green except for i see a little spot that i went out of the lines on okay um i like to use like a um a yellow green like a lime green I don't know why, but it always um, just makes me happier. <laughs> so I'm going to start with my YG67. And notice my grip on my marker. I've gone all the way down to the nib. And I'm holding it really close so that I have a lot more control. Okay, um, after 67, I will go 25. Are any of you going to be in Pleasanton? Do I get to see any of you this coming weekend? Okay, and then after 25, I like to use, do I want to go to 23? Um, it's pretty, oh, it's 03 that I like. YG03. This is such a misnomer, because if you look at the cap of this, this is like not the color that it is at all. Look at that. 
This is like a sour apple green. Doesn't that screen remind you of a Jolly Ranger? Um, yes. Not this expo, we won't have a class, but the following expo we will, and all the rest of them. And we are teaching these. How cool is that? Very, very cool. Okay, so then I'm gonna go into my teals. Um, I'm gonna start with BG18. You always learn something with me. That's awesome. That's what I like to hear. Even when I'm coloring fast because I have to go to the airport to get Sandy. But this is actually more my true speed of coloring. I color probably a little bit faster than this. Um, but because I'm talking, it slows me down a bit. Not a whole lot for this dark teal. Because remember, this is the highlight. Sometimes when I get into like this, um, yes, there will be a class at the Sacramento Expo for sure. Um, sometimes when I get into something like this, I like to go ahead and jump over to my purples um, so that I know that I'm leaving enough room. So I am going to do that here with my BB17. Um, because otherwise I totally run myself out of room and then I'm like okay well it was mostly a rainbow so in order to not do that I go ahead and switch over to the purple ain't no shame in that Yay, I'm so glad that you're excited. Sacramento Expo is actually like closest to my hometown. I'm from Mendocino County, Karen. And so usually Lena, the one that makes all of our cups and stuff, all of the tumblers um, and our chamois, usually Lena comes to the Sacramento Expo because we're from Northern California. Fun fact. Shame. What shame? Do I have shame? Should I have shame? Um, I got, I got, um, my, my package yesterday, Marianne. I'm so excited to color that. And I got some of your paper that you requested. Yeah, ain't no shame in my game. I know, I am, <gasps> did you? Yay! I already reserved one, a female. I'm so excited. We have puppy cohorts going on. Cause you know the, the little puppy that my mom got, Bo? Um, that's so stinking cute. Oh my gosh, they brought him over yesterday and they got him groomed. And he is the cutest little nugget ever. 
<laughs> He's so cute. Even Archie got down and started playing with him, Marianne. So we told my mom he needs to stay groomed all short like this. Um, but anyways, his Bo's parents are going to have another litter. And so hopefully we can get Marianne a puppy out of that litter. Okay, so this V15 is a very pinky purple, and I'm gonna be mixing it with blue. So I wanna bring this back to the blue side. Um, I know, I could not believe that Archie got down and started sniffing them and wanting to play. It was really cute. They even ran outside together, and Archie ran circles around him. It was adorable. So maybe they will be friends after all. As long as my parents keep them groomed. Maybe Archie is very discerning. He likes his friends to be well groomed. <laughs> He's like, look, if I have to get groomed. <laughs> you got a new puppy in December? Brenda, what kind of puppy did you get? Okay, so there's the purple side of the duck. So now I'm gonna go back into those blue greens. Sparky comments about the well-groomed one, yeah. Archie, Archie likes his friends to be well-groomed. <laughs> He's not a fan of the not well-groomed puppies, apparently. But Bo was very happy that Archie was willing to play with him. not using a ton of this color just putting it down in the shadows I gotta watch my time can't be late to be picking up Sandy um Marianne can I color those when we get back from our show or is this something that like I need to do like this moment today before we go. And don't worry, I know that this looks kind of weird. Um, puppies keeping, right? <gasps> you got a Weimariner? Ooh, awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Those are super cool. I expect photos. My uncle had a Weimariner named Jenny. She was gorgeous. And she was so sweet. I loved Jenny. Weimariners have very fun personalities, too. They're just sweet. Rainbow ducks, rainbow ducks, rainbow ducks. Um, after 34, I think I want to use 11. They are such sweethearts, but they are very large dogs. You are correct. Well, they can be. Jenny was... I want, well, 
she was like 80 pounds. So, I mean, she was a good sized dog. But she was just so sweet, you never realized her size. Okay, so now see how he looks super like stripey? We're gonna go in and fix that. Go back to my greens. Yeah, they are very smart dogs. Exceedingly smart dogs. Like sometimes too smart for their own good dogs. <laughs> I think that's why my uncle liked her. Liked to have her. Because he had twin daughters. <laughs> so he needed a dog. But our first big... Oh, she's your first big dog. Anybody else have big dogs? I want a Doberman super bad. And my husband won't let me have a Doberman. Which is super duper unfortunate. We have enough yard for a Doberman. I'm just saying. What are you even talking about? Oh, a throwback breakfast. I was like, what are you talking about, Marianne? <laughs> Is your coffee broken this morning? And notice I'm just going back and forth between the colors to layer them up, marry them together so that they fade nicely into one another. I know. I should, but the only places that I've seen Dobermans, um, they're like six grand. And I don't know that I, number one, I know that Archie would be unhappy with a new Doberman puppy. So we have committed to no new pups until there's no longer an Archie. So we have a number of years. Because Archie's going to stick around to be a super old man. I know it. Um, but then number two, I want to, you know, I got to be able to part with a few grand. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go to California to get my Dobie. There's a place in Rona Park or Sonoma that has Dobies. So, there we go. Here's our rainbow duckies. Are you guys so excited? So now I'm gonna do their beaks and um, feet. That was really hard for me to figure out. <laughs> beaks and feet, beaks and feet, beaks and feet. Um, and I'm gonna use some kind of, I don't know. I don't even know what I want to do for their beaks and feet, honestly. Um, 23. Two big dogs, two small dogs. Mix of Great Pyrenees and Golden Retriever. That is quite the mix, isn't it, Melissa? Two English Pointers. They're medium-sized dogs, 40 pounds or so. See, I feel a Doberman, depending on what breed of Doberman you get, because if you get a European Doberman, then you're looking at a, you know, 90 to 100 pound dog. If you get an American Doberman, you're looking at like a 60 to 80 pound dog. So, I want an American breed Doberman. And I want it to be red. I want one of the chocolate Dobermans. I love the silver ones and the white ones, but they have so many health issues because that color's been bred into them. Um, and it's not healthy. So. But I like big doggies. Pomeranian of 14 and a half years June, so that's why we got it. Oh, 
How sad. We lost our gizmo dog, and we had him for 15 years. And he was purebred Yorkie. We lost him on my child's 13th birthday. How horrible is that? It was so sad. So, so sad. It was, it was such a crush when Gizmo passed. It was, it was bad. It was bad. I think everybody knew him, you know? And that was part of why it was so crushing. Um, because he'd been around for so long. And, yeah. I think hella people cried when Gizmo passed. I know Marianne did. Oh, on Father's Day. Ugh. We just, we felt so bad for Evan because, I mean, we had had Gizmo longer than Evan. <laughs> it's pretty weird when you have your dog longer than you have your child, you know? And so, um, Gizmo used to, like, sleep in Evan's bassinet with him. And he, Gizmo actually told me why when I was going into labor. He did all kinds of crazy stuff and was, like, pawing at my belly and everything, like, he totally knew that I was going into labor. And from the get-go, yes, Melissa, it is so hard. Right? I did, uh, yeah, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, he was with me constantly. Like, Archie's always with me. I mean, Archie is a trained therapy dog, so... He can sense my panic attacks and stuff. We actually got him for Evan because my son has Asperger's. And then Archie quickly figured out that I needed more help than Evan did, apparently. Um. <laughs> so um, now Archie hangs with me 99% of the time. But Gizmo was always with me. And we had him from the time we picked him up when he was eight weeks old. And we had him until he was 15 and a half. And he told us it was time, it was time to go. He was very sick. He was not feeling good. He was not himself. He stopped eating and drinking. It was crushing. It was soul crushing. And it happened to be Evan's 13th birthday. So he was actually a little bit more than 15 and a half because he would have been 16 on December 3rd. So he was almost 16. All right. It is, it's so incredibly hard to lose our fur babies, let me tell you. Okay. So here's our little rainbow duckies. I need to fill in his mouth. And so I'm going to use RV34 if I can find it. Um, I was so sad about Mr. Wilson too though, Marianne. Mr. Wilson made me really sad too. Okay, so there's our little rainbow duckies. And then just like yesterday, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my white gel pen Now that we're all sad talking about our fur babies, we're gonna find Marianne a new fur baby. She's gonna be born in April. I know. It was, oh my God. I cried for Mr. Wilson. I think I cry more when pets pass away. Although I did have a really terrible episode, um, not yesterday, but the day before over my brother. I thought I was doing really well with the whole grief thing. And then out of the blue, out of nowhere, I spend like two hours crying 
because I miss my brother and I want him to come back. And I was super, super sad. COVID makes me cranky. I love making little sparklies on these. Oh, sweet little bullet. Him misses his friend. I will tell you though, Archie is super cool with Gizmo not being here. <laughs> Archie's totally fine with the fact that Gizmo is not around. Aw, look at those little ducks. Yeah, we lost them in October to COVID. Look at those cutesy little duckies. Thank you, Brenda. Um, I have his handcuffs sitting right here. Um, he was my sergeant. And so... Um, I got his handcuffs, and so when I'm sitting here thinking, I play with them, um, all the time. So, they sit right here, and they, they're next to my markers. I hold on to them. Um, so there's our sweet little duckies, and thank you guys all for joining me. And, um, I'm going to, I think I have time to run to Dutch Brothers, and get Sandy her favorite drink. And then I'm headed to the airport to get my bestie. Yeah. And then we're headed to California bright and early in the morning. So um, I'm not sure if there will be a live this evening. But we shall see. So thank you guys for joining me. And I'll see you all very soon. Toodles.